How's it going, Rafiki? You're in Minecraft. It's kind of weird, but how do you feel? How do you feel about it? Ah! Oh, okay, okay. Hello everyone, Dan here from the Diamond Minecart and welcome to another Minecraft mod review where today I'm going to be showcasing the Lion King mod which is an absolutely massive mod that adds the world of the Lion King into your Minecraft game. Now I'm not going to do much of an intro because I want to get straight on with the review as there is a ton of stuff to cover. So basically to start off your Lion King adventure you're going to need to find one of these structures which is kind of like a ticket house or cinema whatever you want to call it and here you'll find the ultimately cool and full of swagger the ticket line look at him he's in his his beautiful little suit with his amazing sunglasses so let's right click him to start our adventure and he will say bring me a gold ingot and i'll exchange it for a lion king ticket so i just so happen to have a, a gold ingot in on my person so we're gonna right click and he will give you thank you use the ticket to open the portal in the room behind you and as i was saying he gives you the lion king ticket so we're gonna go on through here and this is where you'll find your lion king portal so it's actually creating a new dimension in this mod which is amazing which is the pride lands and to activate this portal you right click as you would with a flint and steel and it will use up your ticket but i'm in creative at the moment and creates your portal so there's not much left to do but to go through and i'll see you on the other side Ah, so welcome guys to the Pride Lands, and as you can see I've already been here, but I've got a lot to show you, and the first thing you will see when you enter the Pride Lands in this amazing looking kind of desert place, was this kind of, uh, like, uh, what, what would you call this, like a statue thing, a little, little altar with a chest on top, and you're going to need this straight away, and it contains the Book of Quests, and this will pretty much dictate the story of the Lion King mod to you, so if you right click, you get this amazing looking GUI, and it has like the main page, which is this, and it shows you where your portal portal is just in case you get stuck and you can bring an ordinary book and some lion fur to Rafiki in order to receive another one if you somehow lose it like if you die while holding it and stuff like that and as you can see there are quests on the side so on the left if you click this it will tell you what to do so speak to Rafiki in his tree at the center of the world and that'll be at zero zero coordinates in the center of your land and you're going to need to do this to get a certain well to progress along the story in the Lion King mod and there's also another one which we'll get to later so what also is amazing about this quest book is that it tells you recipes so you can't find out recipes any other way but here I've got a new silver sword which is what I'll get to in a bit but if you click on this it will tell you what it does it will tell you the name of it and you can click this button to get the crafting recipe and that is just amazing I think that's just such an incredible idea just to have a book that shows you everything in the mod and really just helps you play along with it a lot easier so once you've got the quest book you can go out and do whatever you like really there's so much to do there's so many different animals as you can see there's loads of wildlife there's lots to do and there's lots of new stuff so i'm going to get to all the new stuff first and then we're going to go on the little quest just to give you a taster of the lion king mod story so first up we've got how many how many different ores have we got here? we've got five new ores the first one is kind of not new but you can still find it over here which is coal which is the normal coal then you've got the nuka ore which is green with kind of like a brown dark brown background then we've got silver which is used to make silver sword and we'll get to that later then we've got kibulite which i'm not sure what it does it's just used to craft lots of different things and the peacock ore which looks so damn sparkly it's amazing look at this oh my god it's just so sparkly but if you can get over the sparkle and mine it it will be important later on if you also got a load of decorative stuff as well as so you've got like mossy pride stone brick you've got bamboo you've got different glass you've got different dirt you've got so much different stuff this is sand this is like a bamboo tree twig there's so many stairs and actually i'll just show you it's got loads of creative menus and as you can see the vastness of this mod is just incredible we've got loads of blocks where you can create loads of different stuff and just make your houses look incredible look at all this stuff down here you've got deadwood stairs we've got maze we've got so much stuff and we've got all decorations like this as well like the glass we've got rugs we've got bushes we've got trees we've got flower pots we've even got a different colored bed and hyena skulls to go with that too loads of different food which you can learn about in the mod by putting it into the book of quests loads of materials and loads of miscellaneous junk as well as loads of tools and combats and stuff like that but i am going to get to i'm not going to go through all of the decorative stuff and the food in this mod because you can go out and find that out yourself when you play this mod but stuff like important mobs important materials and how to get started in this mod is what i'm primarily going to go over in this mod which brings me on to the grinding bowl now on the uh mod page it suggests that this is the first thing that you create when you get into a world as it helps you to make lots of uh simple weapons and 
materials and also helps you to make food so what you're going to need to make it are one two three four five wooden planks they can be any kind of planks i think a stick and this will create your grinding bowl and this is what it looks like inside the world it's got an amazing animation just looks really cool so we're going to take what is in this chest so we've got a hyena bone a mango that is from a mango tree and an exploding termite so they're pretty dangerous but you can actually eat them so we're going to put this in here and what you do is simply just works as a furnace just without any fuel so we're going to crush the hyena bone and as you can see the little loading bar or progress bar will go from the left to the right and you'll produce something completely different which you can use for recipes later on and these you can actually use what well, as you can see it changes into a hyena bone shard and actually like crushes it but what we're going to need in a second is a bit of crushed mango for the recipes coming up as well as this hyena bone shard so i'm just going to show you how to make this you just get the mango from mango trees that are around in your world and you'll also be able to create ground mango so we're going to put this termite back because we don't want him get out of here and we're going to move on to darts and shooters which are some of the new weapons that are applied in this mod so in this chest here we've got two different recipes to make two different types of shooters so we've got the dart shooter which takes two oak wood planks and a piece of ground mango which we made in the grinder just now and then a silver dart shooter was a little bit better a little bit more accurate and more uses and that's two silver ingot and your ground mango as well so what you've also got in here are the darts that you need to power up these dart shooters so i'm just going to bring one of these in here and to make them you just need one of the three colored feathers a stick and a hyena bone shard for the tip so what these different ones do i think the blue one is a normal one the red one will set creatures on fire and are a little bit more accurate and then you have the yellow dart which is a little bit more accurate than the blue one and will also knock back stuff that you hit with it so let's just get the blue dart for now and I guess also the yellow one so you can see the difference. And all you have to do is have it in your inventory with your, um, you have to have your dart shooter, sorry, active. And then your arrows in your hotbar like this. Right click and it will shoot one. So I'm just going to bring this up just so it doesn't get confused. And we've shot an arrow. So I'm not sure which one that was. That might have been yellow. I don't know. But anyway, what what is cool about this mod is that you can actually go and pick up your darts again. So yeah, these are yellow. So as you can see, these go extremely far. But if I go ahead and get rid of uh, the yellow one and bring out the blue one, you'll see that it flies a lot less far. So you can't shoot it up and above that tree. It just kind of lands a bit short. But as I said, you can pick these up and reuse them again, which is a really awesome feature. Now you can take these dart guns a little bit further and you'll be able to create not only an extra arrow which will explode so we need to try this out first we need to try it out to make it you're going to need to go to the outlands which we'll get to later on but you're going to need a vulture feather an exploding termite and a stick to make a single of these uh, outlandish darts and we're going to fire it and there we go it explodes it explodes nicely so let's throw it into this tree it goes really far as well so um it's really accurate and will explode so they're definitely worth getting when you get to the outlands which we'll get to later on so what you can also find in dungeons within this mod so they're like normal minecraft dungeons but they are obviously lion king themed you can get the dark quiver so what this does and you can't craft it which is even well it's kind of like a really good weapon that you can't craft but you can find and if you right click on it you come up with your inventory and you can also hold loads of darts in here so they're not taking up your inventory space which is really awesome so that is a really cool like little gui there it's really useful just for space saving and hopefully you find them you're lucky enough to find them so what else we've got here are mounted dart shooters so you can't only get the normal dart shooters you can get ones that are just sitting there and are ready to be used via a redstone signal that's either like a button a lever or just a redstone torch i believe so what you can do is take your normal dart shooter be it silver or wooden and you put two sticks either side of it like this and you'll get a mounted dart shooter now i've got one set up just over here and this is what they look like the back is uh the black bit and the front is the red so the red is where you're going to be aiming it and wherever it is placed you just right click it with a bunch of darts so there are a stack of darts in there and that is the highest it can um pretty much hold it can just hold a stack and when you give it a redstone signal it will fire so look how amazing that is. It will just fire and you can also attach it to like a pressure plate and any redstone signal will just cause it to fire. So that is a really awesome feature and you can just spam it and pretty much protect your base, which is a really cool feature. So what else have I got up here? We finished with the darts and because diamonds are not a feature in the Lion King dimension, this dimension is kind of built so that you can do all the normal stuff in Minecraft and more so that you um, don't have to keep going backwards and forwards between the portals so enchanting has got a little bit of an upgrade and what you're going to need is a bongo drum 
So not only do they play notes, but they also act as the enchanting table in this mod. And what you're going to need is zebra hide by killing zebras and any kind of wood. There are five different bongo drums just with different colors, depending on what wood you use. And if you use acacia wood, you'll get this black one, which has a little black rim and they all have different rims, depending on what wood you've used. So what you're going to need is, as you can see, when you right click it, it'll just make a noise, which is kind of cool, but you need it for enchanting. So what you're going to need is two Gemsbok horns, which are obtained by killing Gemsbok, which is a mob we'll get to in a second, and a Peacock gem. And to get a Peacock gem, the Peacock ore that you get earlier, if you mine one of those and then smelt it, you will get a Peacock gem. And that's what you need to make a rhythm stuff. So if you take this rhythm stuff, activate it in our hotbar as our active item and right click you will now see the bongo drum which is really cool and as you can see you can just put it in here and you'll get the weak enchantments for the start just for the silver sword but if you want to make your enchantments even more um better i guess the higher levels then you're going to need these which are musical notes and to get these you need to kill stuff while holding the um we well, need to kill stuff with the rhythm stuff so if you take it to a zebra like this and they will drop one of these notes so it can be any of these notes and if you collect these up and we right click onto here you can actually place all of the notes that you've got in here to create better enchantments which is really cool it's pretty much i'm not enchanting that <laughs> so if you put this in here you can see we can get up to level 12 now which is awesome we now have sharpness 2 on our silver sword and these would normally get used up if i was in survival so that is a really cool system it's pretty much the equivalent of having bookshelves but it's really awesome just make sure you're killing stuff with the rhythm stuff to get these notes and now we need to move on to some mobs so as you can see in the creative menu you have so many mobs that are introduced in this mod but I'm going to go over a few of the key ones that you're going to need today. And the first ones are the lions. Now, these lions are passive and until attack. So we've got the male lions with their beastie square mane. Oh, yeah, check that out. He kind of looks like the ticket lion, but with less swagger. And then we've got the lioness over here. Come on, just look at me. I don't want to punch her because you get really angry. But anyway, these can be, um, yeah, they will be passive until attacked and will attack you really badly. So I wouldn't and can be bred with hyena bones. So the same way as you would with pigs and wheat, but with hyena bones instead. And you can get various other meat and furs from them for use with crafting recipes too. So then we've also got the zebra over here and I must say that these models look amazing. Look, there's a wild lion over here that's just getting a bit aggressive towards this giraffe. But anyway, yeah, th these models are just amazing. The textures are cool. This mod is just amazingly well built. So what we've got is the zebra and this drops meat and hide, which we used in a recipe earlier and can also be milked. I didn't even know you can milk a zebra, but apparently you can just take an empty bucket to it and you'll get some zebra milk for drinking and extra crafting later on. You've also got the rhino and these in the wild may or may not charge you. So you're playing a game with these guys. You walk past and they possibly will or maybe won't charge you. So it's up to you, but they will deal insane damage if you do get hit by them, but they can also be killed for meat. So it's up to you. Do you want the meat? Do you want the skin? Or do you want to die a painful death from this horn here? I'll let you decide, but anyway, awesome looking rhino. Then you've got the Gemsbok, which are pretty useless, but they can be mined. Mined? What am I on about? They can be killed for their skin and their horns, which we used in some crafting recipes earlier. And then we've got the daddy, the tallest mob in this mod, easily, the giraffe. Now, this can be ridden and can also wear a tie. What? What is going on here? You can wear a tie and ride this thing? We need to try this out, I think. I think we definitely do. But first up, we're going to check the last mob, which will die in sunlight, which is the hyena. They spawn in dark caves and burn in the sun. But you can also mine these. I keep saying mine, but I mean kill for their meat and their skeleton bones and stuff like that. So this is what they look like. This will uh, pretty much die, which is a bit inhumane. But anyway, they're hyenas. We don't like hyenas. But anyway, we need to move on to more important matters, which is how to ride this bad boy. Now, what you're going to need to ride them are giraffe saddles. And to get that, you need Gemsbok hide, which is from this pretty little creature over here, and two silver ingots from the ores from earlier to make the giraffe saddle. You can slap that on a giraffe, and you can also get ties. I'm not sure what the crafting recipe for a tie is at the minute. Because when I get the quest book and then right click it, you'll see that it just, um, it doesn't tell you the recipe. So let's try this out. We've got a white tie. But it'll just tell you how to dye the ties. And you can dye all the ties different colors. Oh, wait, hold on. Nope, it won't show us whatsoever. But oh, well. We need to see this on. We need to grab a giraffe and get this party started. So I haven't tried this out yet. It could go incredibly wrong. But hey, let's do it anyway. So we've got the saddle. Uh, the saddle definitely works and then we've got the tie please tell me th oh my oh yes it's beautiful look at this thing that is ah oh, uh, my, my day is made so let's right click ride this guy and who rides pigs not me i am the giraffe king and why am i spinning round i don't like to spin round that much but anyway you can ride these things put pretty ties on them and they look absolutely amazing so 
Oh, actually, we've got one more. Sorry, I forgot about you. This is the crocodile that I've got over here. These are hostile, so these will kill you, and they will spawn in and around water. So they're rarer than hyenas, and one of the rarest mobs in here. They drop meat and random animal parts as well, so they will drop different stuff. And I believe they drop their scales too for future crafting. But yeah, if you find yourself in the middle of the water with these guys approaching, you will probably die. So <laughs> I will watch your back when you're in water or in and around water. So, my god, this mod is long, but it's so incredible, I need to get it all in. And we're going to do a little bit of the quest now. So we're going to find Rafiki's house, which is going to be at coordinates 00, zero at the Tree of Life. So we're going to go over there. After an introduction to all of these, I hope you enjoyed the introduction, but we're going to go over to the quest, and I will go over there right now. So let's go and see old Rafiki. Right then, guys, you join me at 00, zero or pretty much 00, zero, and this is the beautiful, wonderful, amazing tree of life where Rafiki lives. Now, we're gonna go, not going to go up the stairs because, you know, we're in creative, but I'm going to turn this off for now. And then we're going to go and meet Rafiki, which is going to be pretty damn awesome. So let's go up here, and we should find him up here. So here we go. Where are you? Oh, I can see his name tag. He's even got a name tag, and here is... Rafiki, my man Rafiki, how you doing, son? So let's right-click him, and we should um, get a update on our quest book. So he says, oh, welcome to the Bridelands. I don't know why that was so evil, but Rafiki is a dude. Look at him. This modeling is so cool. But let's go into our quest book, and as you can see, we will click the Rafiki quest, and we need to speak to him a little bit more. So if we go up to him and right-click him again, he will say, what's that? You like my stick? Well, bring old Rafiki a stack of hyena bones, and you can have one yourself. So I'm going to go out. Get some hyena bones, or you know, just, uh, you know, um, spawn them in and give him the hyena bones. Now, it should update in here. Okay, yeah, there we go. Look, it says, bring Rafiki a full stack of bones so you always know what your current objective is, which is amazing. It's, this quest book is just really, really cool. So, I've got my full stack of bones. I'm going to right-click him with them, and here is... Oh, my God. Uh, what? What's wrong with you? Do not shout at me, man. I, I know you gave my stick, but... Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the Rafiki stick. It looks amazing. And he gave it to us. So, what did he say here? Let me see what he says. He says, there you go. If you want one again, bring me another stack of hyena bones. So, if you lose it, there's always a way to get stuff back. And now we should have another updated quest. So, it says, okay, we haven't got a current objective just now. So, <laughs> I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with this. If we right-click with him, here we go. Right-click with the stick. And he will tell him what to do. So it says, I hear Scar has returned to the Pride Lands. Oh no! And he has trapped our king in the Star Realm. You must find Scar. Oh god. It's gone. It's gone. Where is it? There we go. <laughs> you must find Scar and kill him. Wow, that's pretty violent. My stick is the only weapon that can harm him. So swords, anything like that won't be able to kill Scar. And Scar is in a mysterious place. Um... He is very... Stop saying that. Why are you so loud? But <laughs> He is really loud, but that's Rafiki, I guess. So, we've got to try and find Scar, attack him, and he will get the star thing, which you can get and then um, take you to another dimension, which will bring you to the corrupted dimension, which I'm going to show you now. I'm not going to show you where Scar is because he's very hard to find, and I'll just spoil the part of the mod, so I don't really want to spoil all of it, but I do want to show you the two no dimensions that are in this mod, and wow, I almost fell there. Right then, so I'm only going to show you one of the new dimensions because the other one needs you to complete the quest for Rafiki and I really don't want to ruin too much of this mod so that you do go out and play it. So I'm going to take you to one of the new dimensions which is a bit easier to get to. Well I say that but you need to go to the dungeons and raid dungeons to find this which is called the Passion Sapling. Now this is the only way to get to the new realm, you need to find it in one of the dungeon chests, plant it and then it won't grow in the land, you just have to right click it with the Rafiki stick and create this amazing thing. Now from here you can't get to the portal just yet but you need to break these things and find one of the fruits so hopefully it will give us one otherwise we are pretty screwed. <laughs> so let's try and find us one of these fruits, come on bear the fruits for me, bear the fruits. It could be quite difficult to find, so I hope you don't need to find another one of these, otherwise that would be really, really difficult. So let's try and find one of these, come on, otherwise I'll just have to spawn one in and cheat a little bit. Come on, bear the fruits. I think it's pretty rare, so it's going to be fairly difficult to get. Come on, decay, decay. <laughs> so the final one is dropped, and it didn't drop another one, so I'm going to have to grow another passion sapling. At least it did give me one of those on the last block. That was pretty lucky, and I'm going to have to... There we go. It's the passion fruit. This passion fruit is the portal to the new world. No joke. Look at it. Jump into it, and it will... No, I'm only joking. You don't jump into it. <laughs> That'll be pretty freaky in the whole land, and I'm pretty wary that animals are going to come and eat me, so we're going to do this really quickly. So when you get past the hard part of finding this passion fruit, the easy part is eating it while at full hunger, and hopefully it will take us to the realm. Oh my god. Okay, we've spawned in water. This is not good. 
This is not good at all. So let's just get to the surface. And you can see the amazing Upendi dimension. So this is called the Upendi world. And I think you'll agree it looks incredible. So let's just switch over to creative and we'll be able to fly around this amazing looking land. So what is the Upendi and why should you go? Well, the Upendi spawns zero hostile mobs and is exactly the same as the normal overworld in the Lion King mod as the Pride Lands, but no hostility. No hostility and it looks amazing. Look, purple water, amazing lily pads, purple skies and just amazing rainforests everywhere. And passion fruits passion fruit trees sorry will naturally grow in this dimension without needing the rafiki stick which is really amazing so you get all the normal wildlife but with just this amazing looking scenery so at the moment there is no um special things that are in the upendi dimension but the mod creator has said that he will add things in the future to make it worthwhile going here but i say no hostile mobs yeah that's pretty much of a plus plus. and to get back to the pride lands you're going to be needing to eat another passion fruit so as you can see there or as you could see there's another passion fruit tree up there that you can see in the distance so you can just go and grab one of those and you'll be teleported back to where we entered the Upendi dimensions. So I think that is pretty much the Lion King mod in a nutshell. It is a massive mod, so there's no way that I'd be able to show it all off in a single video. And I just wanted to keep it into a single video so that it keeps your interest. And I didn't want to show too much so that you don't go and download the mod. And I must say, do go and download this mod, whether you're a fan of the Lion King or not. It is just incredible. The size of it, the quests, and it's always being updated as well. It's just incredible. Look, you've got more stuff. You need to complete Rafiki's quest to go to the outlandish scheme, and there is a couple more quests built in. But as I said, it's always being updated. There is so much in this mod, and it's just amazing. So if you do like what you see, and you do want to play it for yourself, go ahead in the description below and check it out. It'll take you to the Minecraft forums post where you can go and download it. And also, if you did enjoy this very long mod review, so I'm sorry it's been so long, but it is just such an incredible mod, as I've been saying over and over. But if you did enjoy this video and commentary, then I'd really appreciate it if you do hit that subscribe button for daily Minecraft videos. And for all of you, a like and a favorite would be greatly appreciated too. So I think that's pretty much it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and this amazing mod. I've been wanting to do this mod for ages, but been waiting for it to update to 1.5.1. But anyway, enough rambling. I hope you enjoyed the video and that is it from me. So thanks and goodbye.